All right, all right. Many of you have been complaining about my recent videos, so with this one, I'm gonna try and keep things fresh and new. Let's do this, let's go, I'm ready. I'm about to smoke everybody. Yeah, instead of the same old disgusting messes that we see every single day on this show, I'm gonna take a page out of my recent MasterChef video I made and go over dishes that were so good, they left the judges speechless. Mushroom. Next, you're gonna tell me you got that tattooed on your. During the signature dish challenge, Christina had more than a few things to ask about Sakari's creation. Now, Sakari proudly described his oyster potato stew, and you gotta see Christina's reaction. Man, there's a lot going on there. And how to cook the cod? Despite worrying that his dish might come off as pretentious, Sakari shrugged off how other people might have felt about him. I mean, this dude was determined to prove to Ramsay, not anybody else, that he was head chef material. Anyway, back to the challenge. Sakari admired Ramsay as a legend, but saw this as an opportunity to cook for a fellow chef rather than being intimidated. But he was no stranger to making complicated dishes. As a black and brown community pop-up chef, Sakari was out here charging 125 bucks per plate for a seven-course meal. Introducing fine dining experiences to black and brown community. Now, at first, I was worried this was gonna be another Colleen Clique situation, but let me tell you, Sakari's stuff was well worth it. Ramsey will make that clear later, but for now, Sakari explained how he infused his cooking fat with oysters and cooked the potato and leek in it. And boy, was Ramsey impressed. This is sauce, I, I created oyster fat, um, and then we have like a- And the fish? Confit with a little bit of lemon zest. The cod. Uh, confit it um, with a little bit of lemon zest. It's a very complex dish. Yeah, this dude knew what he was doing in the kitchen. And honestly, he deserved way better than seventh place. But be that as it may, up next, we have the signature dish from season nine's strongest contender, Will. Heritage, Italian? Italian and Jewish. I grew up, my friends call me a pizza bagel. Yeah, I'm gonna go to my grave thinking that Will deserved the win over Paul this season. I'm serious, get in the comments and I will fight you about it. Anyway, this time around, Will made a sheep milk nudie. He said he wasn't worried about others trying his food because, well, he knew it was good. When it comes to culinary, you know what I'm saying? I don't worry about somebody eating my food. Guess what? All that confidence of his paid off. Ramsey loved his dish. That is delicious. Thanks, Chef. Great job. Thanks, Chef. A point. And then, during the meat and grill challenge, the blue team was down a member. But Will didn't complain for a second. Got to work on his own anyway. He was even the first to finish and let his meat rest. Will, you done? Let him rest, Chef. Hands off approach. You let them rest. And because of it, his New York strip, ribeye and filet mignon were all nearly perfect. Medium it is. Perfect. And you can easily argue that he was the reason the blue team won with a razor thin margin of 11 to 10. Thanks, Thanks Chef. That's what I'm talking. I play to win. Perfect or nothing. Fast forward a bit, and during the 20 year reunion planning challenge, Will knew when to take a step back and trust Paul's leadership. When his surf and turf idea was torpedoed due to a pescatarian attendee, Will knew how to pivot. Like uh, a fish, surf and turf. One of the ladies can't eat meat at all. Maybe make like a crap. He did that with a banana leaf steamed opa paired with a tantalizing coconut chili wine sauce. Oh my gosh. This is delish. The dish tasted divine and looked stunning, leaving the committee craving more. Pretty, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Makes your palate on a little bit of a journey. <laughs> wow. With his dish winning over Elise's, the blue team swept the challenge with a clean three to nothing victory. It's flavorful, it hits you. I still think about it <laughs> afterwards. I feel it in my mouth. Granted, there was a whole lot else going on in that service, but well, a story for another day. But again, Will got robbed. Don't at me. Now, let's move on to season 11's International Cuisine Challenge, where we had Cindy facing off against Anthony working with Greek cuisine. Cindy was in her elements with ingredients like these. She loved them and made that very apparent when given the chance. I love Greek, I can work with Greek. Olive, feta, mint. I now, she came up with a stuffed chicken roulade with orzo salad. And even though it sounds pretty basic on paper, the judges couldn't get enough of it. This is delicious. The chicken is very well done. Thank you. Sometimes it's best to stick to the basics. She easily scored the round over Anthony, leaving her feeling pretty damn confident about their chances. Two to one, 
We've got this in the bag. And in this same challenge, Janelle's Thai dish was also a huge hit amongst the judges. Nice steamed halibut. I made a lemongrass coconut broth. Well, that's just gorgeous. Not to mention, it looked even better than it tasted. It was so well received that it left Nedra jealous. Oh, that's fantastic. Really? Like, really? But no matter how much stink eye she was giving it, it wouldn't stop the judges from loving it. Let me just... Mm, that's delicious. Come on. But honestly, this wasn't even Janelle's best work. But it was enough for the red team to win 3 to 1. Though, now that we're on the topic of season 11, I've also got to mention Mary's dish in the steak creation challenge. Because I think it's in the top 10 best looking steaks I've ever seen. In real life, on television, doesn't matter. And I think that might have been because Mary didn't overstep for the sake of being fancy and kept things simple. A salt and pepper rubbed ribeye paired with a blackberry vanilla sauce. Now, while Janelle may have thought the sauce was too sweet, comfortable butchering meat, but butchering meat and cooking meat are too The longer the challenge went on, the more praise that Mary's dish got, in no small part due to it being perfectly cooked. It a blackberry vanilla sauce. Wow, done beautifully, medium. And there wasn't any doubt in my mind that Mary was winning over Ray, securing a win for the red team. Now, moving on, during the cooking school challenge of season 15, Kristen shared a funny tidbit about her family's cooking adventures. They dubbed them Kristen's Bitchin' Kitchen because she'd always be bossing her dad around in the kitchen. But hey, it was all in good fun and it just came naturally to her. Whenever my dad and I have to cook for the family, they call it Kristen's Bitchin' Kitchen. As the final pair to present their Branzino dish, Kristen and her dad knocked it out of the park. Their fish was beautifully scored, packed with flavor, and ended up being named the best dish of the red team. The winning dish belongs to... Kristen and her dad, Kim. That had to have been a proud moment for the two of them. Psyched that we had the best dish out of everybody. That's just something that me and my dad are going to be able to share forever. Well, Kristen kept things rolling with the BLT bone-in steak challenge, though she couldn't help but wonder if the mysterious briefcases contained cash. Spoiler alert, the first one did. Me and my dad are going to be able to share forever. Thank you. But she ended up with the second briefcase, which held a juicy ribeye instead. I have this gorgeous, thick ribeye with all that fatty on it. Like, fatty goodness. Honestly, I wouldn't even be mad. As she got cooking, she knew that the stakes were high, especially with the prize on the line. This is a steak challenge. We're fighting for a steakhouse. This has to be perfect. And sous chef Christina was on her back right from the beginning. Careful with walking around with your steak in your hand. Heard. Kristen knew that she had her work cut out for her, especially with Ari Rosenson on the panel. Exactly what a steakhouse steak is supposed to look like. Despite worrying that Ariel and Ashley's dishes had a fancier presentation, Kristen stuck to her guns and did what she did best. I'm seeing the other girls' dishes in front. I'm like, wow, they have a lot more going on than I do. But I think my plate says steakhouse all over it. She was confident that embodying the essence of a classic steakhouse was the way to go. I really wanted the steak to shine on its own, have the sides be complimentary. And I mean, with a reaction like this? Beautifully cooked. Wow, delicious. This has got to be a good thing. Like, he's drooling over my ribeye right now. Well, you can't say that she was wrong. Her dish was praised for its flawless cooking and the standout potato dish accompanying it. A feat that she acknowledged was no easy task. It's very difficult to nail potatoes. That's why it's a sign of a good chef is a great potato dish. Though she had a whole lot of competition for that challenge, Kristen emerged victorious, with her decision to keep her steak simple paying off in spades. My flavor profile, the way I like to eat a steak, I would have to say Kristen's ribeye. Her reward? A dream come true. Lunch cooked by none other than Ari Rosenson himself at Cut, with Ramsey joining in too. Which has to be one of the best prizes that's ever been won on this show. You just cooked for Ari. Now it's his turn to cook for you. But I mean, she totally earned it. Oh my god, like I'm I'm elated. I'm on cloud nine right now. Up next, season 17, the All-Stars season. Now, I've got my problems with this season, as I'm sure most Hell's Kitchen fans do, but there were a lot of good moments that came of it regardless. Nick and Robin teamed up on the cod in the wood plank cooking challenge, setting the bar high for the blue team right out of the gate. Facing off against Jennifer and Michelle, they crafted a mouth-watering chimichurri-basted cod with smoked orange and fennel salad. 
it's really And you better believe it was a hit. Smoke's nice on that because it's not too overpowering. Thank you, chef. Fish is pretty close. So much so that it earned them a well-deserved victory over their competitors. Blue team. Damn. Team gay. Team gay. I mean, even just by looking at it, I could tell it was a winner. Um, but what I would give to get a taste of that thing. Well, the competition heated up and the scores remain neck and neck. They're all tied up. <laughs> oh my god, this is ridiculous. Ultimately, their dish emerged as the standout among the blue team and ultimately a huge victory. Blue team and Robin. Yeah! Yeah! Moving things right along to the Pizza Fusion Challenge, Nick was up against Dana. Ironically, also playing with Greek cuisine. Huh, that's twice now this video. Well, he didn't retread the same ground that Cindy did and made a Greek sausage and toasted pistachio pizza instead. And the judges loved the twist on a classic dish that adding pistachios brought. It's roasted and toasted on top. Yeah. It's almost perfect. Thank you, chef. And Mr. Italiano himself, Marino, hailed Nick's dish as nearly flawless in a testament to his culinary prowess and creativity. And I mean, no shot he wasn't taking that round over Dana. Nick has successfully pulled the blue team back into a tie. Speaking of the All-Star season, though, Van took on the signature dish challenge with lobster as his main ingredient. He faced off against Elise, but not before Ramsey lightened the mood with a playful jab about Van's past run-ins with Maitre D's. You have against Maitre D's. <laughs> I'm going to explode, my friends. Listen to me. Don't touch me, bro. Another great thing about this season, the callbacks. Man, do I love the callbacks. Anyway, Van presented a poached lobster with succotash, a dish that was dressed to impress from the get-go. Praised for its impeccable presentation and the tender texture of the lobster, Van's creation completely stole the show. True. My knife is going through like butter. Yeah, even his competitors were wowed. His efforts were rewarded with the first perfect score of the night, and it was a moment he couldn't help but savor. The night. Yeah, Let's go, man. First five to it looked so damn good. If I could afford to eat that every single day, you better believe that's exactly what I'd be doing. And for the millionth time this video, this dish made all the difference in the challenge. Van single-handedly made sure the blue team made it out of this challenge with the W. Now, going into the cave meat challenge, Van was so damn excited at the prospect, citing his upbringing on his father's arrow shooting ranch where hunting for boars was a regular pastime. So, with him and Millie working on the boar, I was so excited about what Van was gonna bring up. But they were gonna have to go up against Jennifer and Manda if they wanted a shot of winning. But well, Van presented his walnut-crusted wild boar loin with a southern-style braised collard greens to all sorts of praise from the judges. Love the crust. The meat and the collard greens go together. I think the dish plays really strong. And again, it was no small effort on Van's part that made sure the blue team walked out of the kitchen and into yet another fantastic reward. Bring it at home! Chef can taste that south in his mouth, baby! A trip to Hummingbird Nest Ranch specifically, where they got to gorge themselves on farm fresh caviar all afternoon. Blue. Thank you. Oh yeah. I pulled out the W, baby. Speaking of fish though, during the fishing challenge, Van snagged Dover Soul and swiftly set out to gather the rest of his ingredients, eager to execute his vision of a potato skin Dover Soul. Van, what do you got? Yukon potatoes. And he felt pretty confident that it was going to be yet another massive win for him and his team. Now, how are you sticking them on the little butter? My soul has soul things that work of art. However, as the cook progressed, disaster struck when the potato skin separated from his Dover soul. Are you okay? Mess. With less than seven minutes remaining, Van faced a critical decision. Despite the time crunch, he resolved to cook another fish, recognizing that his and his team's chances hinged on his successful recovery. I'm frustrated right now, I had to throw the first pizza fish out, but I got another pizza fish, I'm about to get it on. In the end, the refire got some serious praise for its inventive concept. Works. The potato scales are awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I can count on one hand the number of refires that actually ended up great. But before long, the moment of truth. Are you feeling lucky? 
I feel <laughs> lucky, baby. Because you're going to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. If you know anything about Van, it's that the dude could not stop winning. Until he did, but, well, let's not sour the moment. Moving on. During the International Cheese Challenge in season 14, T was facing off against Brad. And you should honestly know how much of a badass T was by now, but let me just show you what she was cooking up. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> nice one. A rustic calzone with ground pork fontina cheese and a sweet and spicy sauce to go along with it. And like, god damn, did it look good. Spiciness of that sauce just mm, lifts it. Very good. Uh, Brett. And with the match point on the line. Uh, Brett. The chef. Underneath that is brawn. You better believe that T wasn't going to choke here. Because there was way more at stake than just a victory or a punishment. Because she had the chance to take Brett down a notch while she was at it. Raw! Fucking raw! Anyway. Moving on to the exotic protein challenge, and this is where things started to get real intense. I'm not eating any rats. I don't give a fuck if it's a delicacy. She made a bold move going for alligator as her dish, and for this round, she had to face off against Millie too. But since the red team had two alligator dishes, hers was chosen for judging. And what can I say? They made the right decision. Guys, no, they're gators. Because on every single level, the dish had no flaws whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it's everything. It's got the acidity, the heat, the crunch as well. But I mean, come on. It should have gotten way more love on the point side of things than it did. Well, it may not have scored the highest, but it was definitely one for the books. All I want is that W for the fucking team. That's all I want. The C? Now, I want to talk a little bit more about Scott Cummings, the winner of season 12 who is not only famous for making amazing food, but doing it on a budget. What do I mean by that? Well, simplicity was king in Scott's world. Now, let me show you a few of the dishes that really show that side of the guy off. First, during the potato challenge, Scott was dead set on making a potato souffle. Hey. Do you need a potato souffle, chef? Is that wise, a souffle? Yes. Despite Ramsey questioning the wisdom of his choice, Scott wanted to take the risk anyway. If he was gonna go out, it was gonna be by his own hand. And the potato souffle was a perfect way of putting his skills to the test. I want to be different and take a little bit of a risk. Good, let's go guys. And I mean, the fact that he made it to the other side of the challenge without even breaking a sweat should speak volumes. For a five out of five, but uh, anything positive out of Chef Ramsay's mouth, I'll take it. He also paired that souffle with a bechamel sauce and fresh herbs too. You know, just to flex a little. And Ramsey more than respected the guy for it. I have to commend you on having the balls to put the souffle out there. The seasoning is delicious. But Ramsey's respect doesn't come from technique alone. It's a four out of five. Good Jeez. job. Thank you. Really well done. Second, the creative pork challenge. You'll be working with pork. I mean, I don't disagree, but maybe phrase that a little differently, chef. Anyway, the first part of the challenge was a breeze, at least for him. Cards have a name of a cut. Pork on them. Take these eight cards, match the cards. Considering he had to correct a few of his team's mistakes along the way. Go. Hurry up, hurry up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's hurry up now, hurry up. Come back, come back. Right, come back, come back. Come on. Anyway, getting down to the real business here. Cheek. But who did he decide to go up against? You peed me because trying to underestimate my ability. I learned real quick who Keisha really is. Interesting. Let's see if Scott's underestimating her here. Well, even if he was, he certainly wasn't slouching with the dish that he decided to make. Constraint is always there, but I want to take a little bit of a risk. That's what these challenges are about. But before Scott got too consumed with his work, Ramsey reminded him of the time limit. That is right, making a ravioli, but you got 20 minutes. However, Gabriel wasn't too sure if it was a great idea. What the fuck Jeff Scott was thinking? Why would you risk losing the challenge? On the other hand, Scott knew that he had a good thing going. Hey, chef, I'll have it out to you. You're going to love it. It's not a good idea. And eventually, he came out on the other side with a real good-looking ravioli. Cheek ravioli. Also on top of that is some more of the uh, jowl meat. And, well, Ramsey had his doubts. It's absolutely delicious. Oh, thank you, chef. Meat is melting. Yeah. If anyone can master ravioli under a time crunch, it was this guy. Blue team. 
You have won the challenge. Oh! And Scott won that round against Kashia once again. Say it with me now, earning the deciding point. I'm real good about Scott to begin with, but he fucking nails it. God, I cannot get enough of this guy. Well, in order to stop me from gushing about the guy for like 15 more minutes, let me stop things right here. Get in the comments and let me know who else, not including Scott, made some serious showstoppers during their time on the show. And while you're down there, don't be shy about liking and subscribing. It helps out a whole lot. But until next time, go ahead and check out this next video right here.